All right, we move onward to the AFC Norte. Uh, very interesting division. Let's start with the Cleveland Browns. Yeah. Um, their floor, seven wins. Their ceiling, 13 wins. Yeah. It's a lot. The the floor, by the way, for the Ravens, which we'll talk about, I think is different than the Cleveland Browns because Cleveland, I think, is a, this team, is, in my opinion, is a little bit more anti fragile. I agree with you. I, I think I, the, the most important on quarterback for Cleveland has got to be Odell Beckham Jr. It's one thousand percent Odell Beckham Jr. If Odell if Odell returns to form, this team can be this team could compete with Kansas City. In some games, like I think that's the way to spray. Yeah, it. I was. I would actually. I think that's a really good way to put it. If you think about the the uh, Cleveland Browns winning thirteen games, and that means that they're competing with with mm-hmm. Kansas City. Yeah, like the Bills won thirteen games last year yeah. in the AFC title game with um, Kansas City. They need to be like think about how many things. Now they had a couple things go wrong for them in that loss to Kansas City, but their their offense really like their plays hit right. They need a player that can can make plays when the play call isn't perfect. Yep. And that's the type of player that Odell Beckham Jr. is. The Cleveland Browns um, win total 10.5 right now. The over is minus 120, which is interesting. So I look at 10.5, and, and I know they have a high ceiling. I know that they've got – I really believe in Kevin Stavansky. Um you can't bet over on any of these. I'm teams not betting Tennessee. over there. Like I mean, COVID it, is too. COVID is too. Still too much there. I'm sorry, you can't bet. I'm not betting. Kansas City Chiefs are my favorite team. I'm not betting over on them this year. I'm not. And there are eight no to the over. And read it. You. It is d- d- free betting advice here. Do not bet overs on these teams that have double digit wins. It's just going to be too hard. There are too many things that can go wrong. The Ravens. What happened to the Ravens last year? Ravens were a right. fantastic team with an easy schedule, and they went under. Why? Random shit happened. Right. Like. The Ravens had the 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 one of the easiest schedules in the NFL after after they started six and five and cleaned up. But what happened? Those five games they lost, random shit, COVID, all that stuff. It's just too hard. Like, and that that's part of the reason we move on to Baltimore here. Yep, floor of six, ceiling also of thirteen. Is this? Is this all Lamar Jackson? This is Lamar Jackson being like, if Lamar goes out, like. They they think about they have one of the worst backup quarterback situations in all of football. And I like I like uh their I like the guy from Utah that I'm mm-hmm. forgetting his name. Shell I I like but like th- he's not Tyler Hundley. I I like him. He's fine. But like as a third quarterback developmental guy, they they might go into the season with him or Trace McSorley as the backup. This is like it, it it's bad. And like Baltimore's smart enough where if Lamar got hurt, they would just tank and get a really high draft pick. Yeah, but like. But there's obviously that aspect of it. Yeah, I guess that's a, that's a good point. I, I was trying to think about it like if Lamar plays most of the games, you know, what is what is their floor? Um, and I think the natural inclination is to say they have a pretty high floor. And I kind of agree. I think, I, but I still I think even if if both quarterbacks are healthy, I think Cleveland has a higher floor. Because of what Stefanski can do, and I'm not sure this isn't actually Lamar. This is like the offense. Yeah. Like I just do not have a ton of faith. Now maybe it does come back and they do figure some things out, but I'm not sure that Rashad Bateman, who I think is their most important non-quarterback, is. Um, yeah. Like it, if he's not great, like they have a terrible receiving core. Yeah. If he can't win against single coverage, you're going to find out a lot about Lamar. Uh, you know, if he can win against single coverage, you're going to find out. But also, about. like, find me a quarterback that's that's making throws to guys that are have players trounced all over them left and right. Like that just doesn't happen. Th- this team, this team has this team is reloading, and there's never a guarantee that when you reload, as good as their process is, as much as we like them, if you reload, there is no guarantee you are going to come up with the same cards that you had before. Orlando Brown gone. Right, mm. uh, they're going with Alejandro Villanueva. That's a different bet. Mm. You know, Yonda left before last season. That didn't go quite as well. Judon, who I just talked about, a solid player for them. Now gone. You're replacing him with a first rounder, but again, a late first round edge player. Not necessarily the greatest hit rate. 
Then you have you 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 go with Pernell McPhee and Tyus Bowser, like to replace Ngakwe. And it's like, who yep. knows? And then last season before the season started, you had to replace Earl Thomas. Like it, it makes yeah. the job of like a guy who I said Marlon Humphrey is their most important not player besides Lamar. It makes his job a lot harder, and he's come up interesting, big for them. So the, it's but. interesting you say that because like when I was thinking about this, I was thinking about most important player in like the ceiling floor aspect, like lots of variants. Yeah. And I don't feel like Marlon Humphrey has a ton of variants. Like I think he's going to be really good. Um, but if they if they're we've never seen the Ravens consistently have to play games from behind right and so if if their defense can continue to play as a top 10 group it 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 shrinks their variance absolutely um i mean lamar tested positive for for covid if you, yeah i know well today was we're recording this but if you're listening to this on sunday like a few days ago you think about them installing a new offense that is better I, like i'm not going to overreact to that by any stretch of the imagination but like if you're thinking about you know them hitting their ceiling Certainly comes into effect. Uh, win total is 11. The under is minus 120. Our simulations have them going under nearly 70% of the time. And yeah. um, I think, you know, that that sounds like, oh, you're hating on Baltimore. Winning 12 games is no fucking joke. Yeah. Especially in this division. Uh, next up, we have the Bengals. Their floor is four wins. Their ceiling is 11. And I think the ceiling is super interesting to talk about. Um yeah, this is also not going to surprise a single human on earth. Um, but, uh, you know, to me, their most important non-quarterback is Jamar Chase. Mm -hmm. And the reason it is is because it's unfair to, to make it a tackle. <laughs> because if you go, oh, yeah, yeah, this tackle all of a sudden figures it out. Yeah, but if Jamar Chase ain't getting open, it's not going to matter if that person becomes average. Yep. Yep. I think that's fair. Burrow, it looks like there was that article in The Athletic this week that talked about the mechanics and sort of how he's working to sort of be have a stronger arm. I do think that that's – I mean, we've seen Brady who had a crappy – Brady's throwing it stronger now yeah. than he ever has. So, I mean, Burrow, Burrow seems to me to be a guy that we should still be buying into after year one. Somebody asked me on a show, did I think – do I think Burrow will end up being better than Justin Herbert? And – I, I still think it's I still think it's close to a coin flip. Who would you rather have? This is by the way testing out a new segment. Would you rather? Would you rather have Justin Herbert or Joe Burrow? Uh Burrow. Damn it. You were supposed to say Herbert so I could say Burrow. So like my I think that we've we have enough, we have information on them. Herbert's a lot better than we thought, but the we also if you're offering me them at even odds a a year after I could get one. Like, what was the ratio last year? 70 30, 80 20. And all the inf a lot of the information we got last year was noisy an injury and, and a bunch of really good, like, pressured pocket touchdown passes. Like, give it to me. I, I'll take Burrow. Uh, I will take Burrow as well. It's very close for me. The tiebreaker comes here. Joe Burrow had an anomalously bad year throwing deep passes. People would love to blame the arm talent. That's garbage. It also doesn't take arm strength to complete deep passes that's more like intermediate passes outside the hashes uh, outside the numbers um but he also had bad receivers bad receivers like aj green's corpse was out there running routes for him keenan allen is one of keenan allen's the most underrated receiver in the nfl he is fucking amazing yeah. his route running is insane mike williams going up and get the ball jalen guyton is like a speedster um so uh that's why i'd rather have burrow um 11 wins to me is not it, it's not insane to, yeah. to think that that's uh, a possibility so what about what about pittsburgh here we have yeah, the same so, distribution for pittsburgh four wins to 11. cincinnati by the way i just say six and a half is their their total the over is minus 130 so people feel similarly people are people are going that way whereas pittsburgh the the uh, total is eight and a half i want to say yep and the under is minus 135 yes and that is that is a recent development and people said we were the ones hating yeah, on yeah. that's a recent well and that's the thing i i like you look you can say the market's wrong bet it if you if you think the Steelers are great bet the over but yep. for the Steelers, i think that their most value or most important non-quarterback i mean this this shows how like little i think of them I mean, you probably need to have a defensive player of the year season out of TJ Watt if this is ever going to – like, 
he basically has to have a strip sack fumble of like all three of these young quarterbacks in the division for them to go four and two in the division. And even then, I don't see it. Like, because think about their wide receiver position. None of those guys, I don't care what the fantasy people say, mm -hmm. none of those guys are difference makers individually. Agreed. They're Agreed. all, they're a good group. They're not a great, none of them are great individually. They don't have a tight end to speak of because they drafted Mark Bruner Jr. in the draft. <laughs> and, and like, and their offensive line's not going to be very good, right? So who is it? I mean, other than a coach, you could say Matt Canada, maybe. Um, I think Mark, Matt Canada is a great one, I, I, but the thing is Matt Canada is just doing what Ben Roethlisberger wants to do. I mean, that's just a fact. Um, I think TJ Watt is, is a great one. Um, I, I'm going to go a little outside the box here though. I, I agree that the defense has to be uniquely amazing. And so I'm going to go with Devin Bush, which, you know, we talk about linebackers all the time, but like for their defense to be that amazing for them to hit 11, 12 wins. I think it is going to make, they're going to have to be so good everywhere. And Devin Bush is going to have to turn into like yeah. Fred Warner um, for them to, for them to do that. I also said this the other day, I was like, Ben Roethlisberger is 80 to one to win MVP. The, and I don't think he's going to have a good enough season to deserve MVP. But if he has a good season, people love talking about, you know, Ben Roethlisberger and like the whole, like I lost weight and I'm an old quarterback and I played well narrative. Um, so just throwing that out there.